Today I'm very excited and grateful to Inger Nova Jorgensen for coming over and being willing to talk with me today about self-confidence and smallness and some other things that we'll cover. Inger is a sculptor, a painter, a singer, a songwriter, and an event producer. She has, uh, well, we've worked together once when we were uh, working with the kids at Ashland High School to produce a music show that ended up uh, raising $3,000 for Syrian refugees. And Inger taught me about marketing and mm -hmm. she encouraged the kids. You were a mentor to a lot of the high school kids. Mm -hmm. And she got eight musician friends up on stage. It was an awesome production. Mm -hmm. And Inger also, with her artist eye, she uh, has been doing my makeup for my YouTube videos, <laughs> full disclosure here, and it's been over great. Over coffee. <laughs> it, over coffee. Yeah. You and just, you boost my confidence yeah. every time. It's not just about your artist eye and the color, though <laughs> that is amazing, but it's really more about collaborating and yeah. you give me self-confidence every time mm -hmm. that you do that. I, I always laugh because I say that Inger is like my avatar. <laughs> if I could be someone, I wouldn't be Michelle Obama. I'd just be Inger. <laughs> It's true. Inger is a creative professional, and I, I just I've learned so much from you about how to step out and be in the world and bring all your gifts and talents. And so my hat is off to you. Thank you, Renee. Yeah. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> well, so as you know, we we're talking about uh, a little bit about self confidence and about smallness, mm -hmm. kind of the opposite of self confidence. Right. And I know certainly there are times in my life where I've felt small, just if someone has, uh, if I assign a greater amount of power to them mm -hmm. because of their title mm -hmm. or what I think they're doing in the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering for you if you've ever had times, I know you know a lot of famous people, mm -hmm. and if there have been times where you've felt also that self doubt or smallness. I think um, the places where it comes up with me often is um, with music, mm -hmm. but um, more so, not so much meeting people. Meeting people, to me, I, I, I kind of look at everyone as, you know, uh, there's so many people in the world who don't get recognition, mm -hmm. who could be Nobel Peace Prize winners or be very famous people if they if people only knew what they were doing behind the scenes, you know, mm -hmm. so so just because some uh, the culture assigns somebody this, you know, rank, I don't necessarily look at them as like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. so first I look at them as a human being mm -hmm. and just like everybody else and then and then decide. So I don't I, I try to do that every time I meet somebody, mm -hmm. you know, I yeah. I remember one time uh, many years ago, well, I've met Bonnie Raitt a few times, mm -hmm. and so she's kind of one of my, you know, I look up to her. I've always mm -hmm. looked up to her in terms mm -hmm. of music because she's such a strong force in the mm -hmm. in the music business as a woman. And um, and so when I met her, I or when I was going to meet her, I thought, oh God, this is going to be hard. You know, I I'm going to be so nervous and everything mm -hmm. else. And then I just remembered that I told myself, and I said, this is. She's just a person like everybody else, and we had the best time. Great. She was a doll, so yeah. it was really fun to meet her. Well, I really see you doing that in your life. It's something that I think is particularly remarkable mm -hmm. about you having so much talent, and yet you're nice. This is what I tell people <laughs> <laughs> behind your back. You know, she's so talented, and oh. yet there's this kind of folksy encouragement and mm. honoring Mm. that comes out and just even in the the way you worked with the high school kids mm. there was no kind of one up one down oh, it's yeah. just very uh equanimity is mm. the word that comes to mind very in balance mm -hmm. and in tune with humanity well i was raised by pretty cool people maybe that's part of it that's true i've met your i've met both your parents yeah. so that um, is true. very humble artistic both of them um mm. but uh i i think it just it just comes down to um, I appreciate authentic people, mm -hmm. and so I I strive to be authentic in my world. And mm -hmm. being inauthentic, people are often not as humble, mm -hmm. um, or some people that are inauthentic are not as humble. I should say. Right. And so um, I don't look at that as a great trait. Right. And so I I think I do sort of strive to 
to do that in my life and just um, really get to know people as as they are and not and part of allowing somebody to feel comfortable with you is you feeling comfortable in yourself and vice versa so mm -hmm. um, let's yeah. just talk about that because I yeah. remember that was a piece of advice mm -hmm. or not advice but a suggestion you made to me when I was doing my YouTube videos mm -hmm. to um, before I got started to stand in myself mm -hmm. and right. let the audience mm -hmm. know that they're safe with me. Yeah. And I just thought that was such a fascinating thing. It How is, did yeah. you learn that? How do you use it? <clears throat> What's that about? Well, I'll have to credit that from, to Bob Miner. He's a vocal coach of mm. mine. Mm. Awesome guy. Um, he, he's the one who, who first said that to me, and it just always stuck with me. Mm. And I use it often when I, right before I get up on stage. Or I, I mm -hmm. used to. I don't do it as much anymore, but when I was less comfortable. Mm. Um, it's... It's really a matter of an energetic um, exchange, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. any situation where you're with other people or you're on a stage, you're, you're having an exchange. So if I'm up there and everybody is sitting in the audience and I walk up and they're like thinking, well, who is this girl? You know, like, what uh -huh. is she going to do? And what it, I think what happens is inside people, they think about themselves, whether mm -hmm. they realize it or not. You mm -hmm. know, when they see somebody else on a stage yeah. or up doing something. So they get nervous. So they, get, they might get nervous either f for you mm -hmm. or maybe they feel uncomfortable for whatever reason, mm -hmm. you know, and, right. and, and, it, and it creates a cycle. So if I'm uncomfortable, they're uncomfortable. If they're uncomfortable, mm -hmm. I'm uncomfortable. So... Mm -hmm. If you sort of set that tone originally, right. I, I just found it was a great tool. Yeah, so. well, I did too, and yeah. I thank you for that. And that yeah. just that sense of taking a moment to ground right. and also realizing that it's a vulnerable relationship. Exactly. I mean, they're there to watch you. And I've experienced this when I've watched you and mm. and Jeff mm -hmm. and all your other musician friends yeah. perform, that I, you know, I want to support you, mm -hmm. and that helps in the relationship yeah. and to yeah, just bring everything nice. alive. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, why why we've done well with our our music together Jeff and I is because we I think it seems like when I've the feedback I'm getting is that people really like to see the relationship between us. Yeah. And true. they like to see um how how we interact with the audience because we're not putting it on. You know, right. I don't think. I mean, it's it doesn't. Fake. I try anyway, right. not to. Right. <laughs> try to just relax, and it's just mm -hmm. all about. It's just about relaxing and, and allowing mm -hmm. the. And I think people yeah. see that that love and that grace yeah. that comes comes through. Now, how does that work when you're putting on a show, mm -hmm. uh, either with your sculptures or painting? Mm -hmm. And I know you have your own mm -hmm. studio and collection of mm -hmm. different artists who mm -hmm. work in the same space. So how does that happen? Because then it's not about you stepping out to perform, but you're presenting mm -hmm. some pieces you may have worked on for months. Right. I'd say it's a little easier with, because when you're on a stage, you never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So at least if I don't like a piece, I can throw it out of the show. <laughs> oh, does that happen? <laughs> yeah. 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 Just doesn't feel if, right. If it's not done or it's just doesn't, yeah, I don't like it. It doesn't go with the body of work or whatever. I can throw it out. So generally, most of the things that I'm presenting, I feel pretty comfortable with mm -hmm. generally. Mm hmm um, at least in the last number of years, you know, more mm -hmm. so, of course. Mm -hmm. But um, but in the beginning, um, it was harder. But um, mm -hmm. I think you've mentioned that you thought it was funny how we were saying something about the heart on a sti stick. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that an exhi exhibit yeah. is like putting your heart yeah. out on a stick and having people well, just kind being of an artist, bat it around. Like, in general. It's yeah. just like, here, just, just take my heart and just... Because you know you are you're putting your your um, feelings, your emotions, your, your everything about you yeah. is you know coming out through whatever art form it is. And people have their own lenses how sure. they're going to see it, which has nothing to do with yeah, you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Must be very vulnerable. It is. It's hard. Um, so what do you tell yourself in those moments? How do you get through and? and continue to motivate yourself mm -hmm. to stand where you stand? Let's see, well, um, I really, f I'm, I'm a big believer that the mind is extremely powerful. So if we, basically, you know, I believe that we create these neural pathways mm -hmm. in a sense. So yeah. in, in our mind, there's all this stuff going on and there's all these tapes playing, as you know, 
and so many of the tapes, probably 90% of the tapes people play in their minds are negative about themselves. Yep. And um, as a coach, I'm sure you, you understand that thoroughly. Mm -hmm. And so if, if I can constantly replace those negative thoughts consciously with a positive thought, then I'm eventually creating this new neural pathway, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, if you're not conscious of that, I mean, you can, you can believe it, but there's also the action of actually of yeah the practice of practicing. doing that and so do you have a so practice? I do yeah, yeah. so um, for years I worked on because I had plenty of negative thoughts about myself mm -hmm. plenty and I still mm -hmm. do we all do I think that's mm -hmm. just the human condition I yeah. don't think anybody is I agree. immune yeah um, and I think it's a constant something you have to constantly work on I don't think it ever stops mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so so yeah I just I have a practice of being very very aware of the things that I'm thinking mm -hmm. when I wake up in the morning mm -hmm. the tapes start right away mm -hmm. and so then the stopping of that starts right mm -hmm. away as well so that mm -hmm. I kind of for a while I maybe had a couple notes on my you know wall or whatever mm -hmm. just to remind myself and mm -hmm. and now it's more automatic and I do think that has to do with the brain you know mm -hmm. and the mind yeah. and how I think too um, what I talk to people about is befriending their inner critic mm -hmm. so instead of pushing again and you know don't yeah, don't right. think about it. Shut up. All yeah. of that, which takes energy, yes. to instead go. Oh, mm -hmm. this is a part of myself that mm -hmm. is feeling hurt or is unsure yes. or whatever it may be, and just right. kind of bring them into the fold mm -hmm. and treat yeah. them with kindness. Um, I uh, one of the meditation teachers that I followed for a little while was Adyashanti. I don't know. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, but he one of the things that he said was really cool was that um, you don't have to meditate and empty all your thoughts they're mm -hmm. going to come in you know yeah. especially when you first start meditating mm -hmm. and so let the allow the thoughts to you know drop in acknowledge that they're there but then let them go so mm -hmm. just that continuous so that that really helped me mm -hmm. that really helped me just yeah. not even just in meditation but just in, in life mm -hmm. you know yeah, it's I've okay heard. i have a thought i have a bad thought about myself or someone else you know mm -hmm. oh well let it go you know the thing that helped me with that was uh thinking of thoughts as puppies in a box <laughs> and I have had, we've had 12 puppies at one time, uh -huh. and they're just constantly moving. Yeah. They just get up, they get out, and so gently, you know, no, back in the box. Here you go. Yeah. Back in the box. Yeah. <laughs> but with that same kind of kindness. Oh, and that's yeah, nice. hard to get that's mad at puppies. <laughs> that's smart. I like that. I'm going to have to use that one. <laughs> um, so I'm curious, you know, I joke about this, but you really are a model an avatar for me about being a creative professional mm -hmm. and that you bring your passion mm -hmm. and you create mm -hmm. so much and I'm just uh, wondering who your avatar might be or if there mm -hmm. are role models who mm -hmm. people who inspire you yeah um, I mean there's so many um, and there's so many art forms that I do so I, I, know. I think of a lot of different people um, you know, Annie Lennox is a big one for me in terms of music. Um, what inspires you about she's, her? She well, she's been doing music a long time. Mm -hmm. um, she's she's a powerful force in the world. She's an advocate. She's a environmentalist. She's a activist. Mm -hmm. um, but I saw her perform. You know, a couple of years ago, I think it was at um, a big tribute to Paul McCartney, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she sang, a, you know, a Paul McCartney song, and it was the most powerful performance. Mm. And mm. she's, what, in her late 60s or something like mm. that. Mm. She was wearing this giant dress, and it was just <laughs> like, I mean, huh. the the energy coming off of her was mm -hmm. so intense mm -hmm. that I, I was bawling. Wow. And so just, just to, to, she's carried that. She was very innovative, mm -hmm. extremely creative. She didn't yeah. give up yeah. what she, people thought. Right. You know? She just went ahead and did yeah. it. Yeah. She's just, she's always been herself. Um, mm -hmm. She's, she has so many awards in her life. I mean, she, mm -hmm. she's, she's a really, anyway, she, so she's one of them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I would say um, Aretha Franklin and, um, uh, India Ari is mm -hmm. really one mm -hmm. of my favorites. Mm -hmm. What do you like about um, her? She she is somebody who I really admire because she was kind of, you know, she got a little mainstream, but she always kept um, that part of her really intact in the music business where mm -hmm. she just, she talks about, you know, don't 
don't do work on yourself. Don't, mm -hmm. you know, just right. as you are, mm -hmm. you know, you're beautiful no matter what you right. are and who you are mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And she has many songs that like right. just speak directly to that for, for young I've girls. I've used they... a lot of her songs oh, yeah. in girls circles. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, and I, I've done some of her songs over the years, but mm -hmm. she's just, she's, she really, really inspired me in my twenties big mm -hmm. time. So. Cool. And what about sculptors or painters? Anyone in particular? Um, hmm. Louise Bourgeois. Mm. I don't know if you know who mm -mm. she is. I don't know her. Um, she did that giant spider that was outside the Tate. Huh. It, it still is, I, or mm. maybe not anymore. But it it mm -hmm. it was it mm. was um, copied many times by her, and it's, it's all over the world now. But it, it's one of the biggest sculptures in the world. Mm -hmm. But she that was just one of the pieces she did. That was a trip. It was a tribute to her mother, mm -hmm. um, being like a weaver of the world because mm -hmm. her mother died mm. at a young age, and mm. um, she's just a really powerful. We should look her up, Louise Bourgeois. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. And you've had some big breakthroughs in your career mm. recently. I'm mm. wondering if you want to say anything about those. Yeah. Um, well, I have a I have a show coming up in the Bay Area for mm -hmm. my bronze sculpture in mm -hmm. Palo Alto. And these are big bronze sculptures, right? Or these? No, these um, are the ones that are medium like this. size. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that's at Bryant Street Gallery mm -hmm. in, in Palo Alto, and so that's in April of next year. So that's exciting. Mm -hmm. That's the first like you know, kind of official bronze show I'll have. So that's mm -hmm. exciting because I've always done more painting stuff mm -hmm. over the years and I've just been doing um, the bronze in the last like eight years. So mm -hmm. it's exciting to yeah. kind of have a new, newer art form that mm -hmm. is kind of taking off. And bronze has so many different stages too. Yeah. Both the people who model for you and then mm -hmm. making it in clay and then mm -hmm. the technical part of pouring the bronze. Mm -hmm. and the mold and the yeah. waxes and the, yeah. Yeah. And I've learned to do, do all that myself as mm -hmm. well, which mm -hmm. I've been really lucky. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lo some local friends who have a private foundry mm -hmm. and have taught they, me how to do it. Are there very many women who do that, who do bronzes? No, there aren't. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't think. <laughs> and what about the... I mean, more, more all the time. What more about the time. Emigrant Lake Outdoor Center? I hear you're, oh, well. you're <laughs> coming up with... Well, that you're in negotiation with them. Well, we'll see. I mean, um, I'm hoping that um, there may be an opportunity to do a large-scale sculpture for the new mm -hmm. center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like 9 or 10 feet tall? Or 15. Or 15. <laughs> right. And okay. just showing the power, right? This mm -hmm. is a... Yeah. yeah. I don't want to say too much about it because yeah, I don't know shouldn't. where you are in the process. <laughs> but exciting to have it yeah. and something that mm -hmm. tons of people would see in this yeah. natural right. kind of state. Right. So just lastly, what kind of inspiration do you draw upon? being such a creative professional, mm -hmm. like you're out there in all mediums, mm -hmm. how do you find your own inspiration? Um, you know, I'm not really totally sure. <laughs> because it's a mysterious process. It is, because yeah. I, w I was actually kind of thinking about this last night. I was I'm making this new piece um, with some sort of bird elements and mm. uh, a figure and um which is what i've been doing a lot of lately. right i've, I've seen got a lot, a of, lot of a lot of those mm -hmm. um and and i was wondering where did this come from <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah what is going on uh -huh. and i i think um the the times where the inspiration comes is when i can actually get quiet yeah and so mm -hmm. You know, out of sort of silence, that it, that can, things can be born, mm -hmm. and so I guess I could attribute it to that. But mm -hmm. I mean, it comes from everywhere. It comes mm -hmm. from my experiences with music because that really feeds back and forth through my art and my music. It's all sort of one. Mm -hmm. um, I I get a lot of inspiration from. You know, interestingly enough, recently I've been I was sculpting and I. I felt stuck, and then I went and looked at these art books of painters, mm. and I got all this inspiration from these paintings mm. for mm. my sculpture. So, mm. you know, there's not, there's just never one place. You know? mm -hmm. It's just, it's mm -hmm. all over. It's, it's everything. I mean, mm -hmm. it's kind of a weaving, yeah. like you were talking about the yeah. spider. Yeah, you know, the weaving and integration mm. of all these many different yeah. avenues. It's, um, mm. I mean, my life is so busy too. So I guess if I if I stop and think about it, it's it's probably um, it just comes from so many different aspects of my life because I'm doing mm -hmm. so much all the time, mm -hmm. you know. And there's so many people in my life who are inspiring, and mm -hmm. you know, yeah, mm -hmm. like you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
So lastly, what would you, a, a lot of what I do in coaching is about honoring people where they are mm -hmm. and encouraging them mm -hmm. and also kind of fostering a resilience, mm -hmm. like keep going, it's mm -hmm. going to be okay. Yeah, yeah. What would you say for someone, a budding artist or a budding songwriter or someone who really is just at that tender stage, mm -hmm. what would you tell them? Mm-hmm. I, I just spoke in front of a, I don't know if I told you this, but I, I spoke to a bunch of kids, uh, high school kids recently. Oh. In, um, it was a program at SOU, an art program, hmm. like a summer art arts oh. thing where they did theater and painting and different things. Um, and so um, I was asked a similar thing. And I think one of the, the girls raised their hand and said, how do I get over my fear of of, of, and, and not liking what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. right. And my advice was no one can do what you do. Mm -hmm. No one in the world has your thumbprint. No one can do, will do, ever do anything like you do, has done anything like you do because it's you, you know? And so if you're being authentic and if you can come from that place always, that's, that's the biggest place of inspiration I think is from the, the heart mm -hmm. and from yourself. Yeah. You know, your true self. I mean, of course, people copy people and, and right, there's, right, right. there's not a lot of new stuff out there, they say, and all that stuff. But, but as, in essence, there is. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is new. Everything, mm -hmm. because it comes from a different, a different person. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, I'm unless gonna, it's coming I'm gonna, from I'm a gonna, computer I'm going to record you saying that and just play it over and over to myself <laughs> when I need it. Oh, yeah. Inger says. <laughs> it's true, right? It is completely yeah. true. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you Thank so you. much for being Thank here. Uh, Inger Nova Jorgensen, <laughs> sculptor, songwriter, painter, avatar for me, <laughs> mentor, all kinds of things. Uh, Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you, Renee. It's an honor. Mm.